Hi there, I'm Buddha, and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. In today's episode, I'm building myself a 5U3 Tweed amp. It's an amp uh, I bought from Tube Amp Doctor in Germany, and they gave me a special price, uh, so I do this video. So I thank them in advance, and it's a great adventure. Let's build it. <laughs> So at this moment, I came with this. This is the back of the board. I, I haven't soldered it yet. I just put the, all the components in place. I'm about to solder it. And I also assembled the chassis with all the, the parts, two sockets, just hand tight, not, uh, not very tight because if I have to change something it's easy to to take it off but just to check if all the the pieces are are going into place now i'm starting to solder and getting all the pieces together and hopefully it works i have to drill two additional holes to the chassis one over here and one over here let's do it This isn't doing it. I'm not sure if this is the right drill. I'll probably have to get a proper drill for metal. Uh, let's do the rest. Okay, so I'll be soldering this. I'll have to put solder in all of this stuff here. Now let's check if everything connects. I'll use the multimeter to check if everything is right. Let's do it. I'll set it to make a noise if there's continuity. So for example, this tube must be seems always working let's move to the next step board is fully soldiered now i have to do the back of the board the connections with this yellow wire let's do it <laughs> In order to make it simpler, I just numbered this row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 until 12, and this A, B, C, D to P. Now <clears throat> I'm doing the same thing here, and this way I won't be mistaken. Which points should I get closer? A, B, C, D. <laughs> I have 
after soldering all I have to cut the excess of the components so there's no shorts and if you do that uh, use some protection otherwise things might fly into your eyes and that's not good believe me I just got hit on my glasses with one and I figured out it's a dangerous process way prettier <laughs> So I just did a lot of cabling. I have this, a lot of cables. All this labeling is for me to, so all this labeling here is for me to know where each cable is going. Now I need to fix the, the, this blackboard to the chassis. So I need to mark it, but be very careful on not getting it in the way of components I have to drill a hole here but so there's there's two pre-drilled holes here so probably one over here will be fine so what I'll do is I'll fix it here <coughs> and mark it with a pencil probably have to uninstall this I just installed the, um, all the components just not to lose it but in order for me to move inside the chassis I need to uninstall it otherwise it will be very hard to to move inside so this will go to rest A little easier. I'll probably have to remove these checks too, but one at a time. So, okay. My strategy will be to take this as an example and then mark the other. So I have all the extra cabling <laughs> coming out. It looks like a ship. Um, I've pre I've drilled here and here to attach it to the chassis. Now it's time to assemble the main power supply, main transformer. I will need to twist the right the the red cable with itself so it becomes just one cable and then do it to the yellow one to the green one so make it all be just one cable just got a new drill let's check if it works drilling the chassis It was a drill problem, so let's hit it. Gear is always right.
is a lot of work. <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot, but it's it's hard. It's not um, it's not a simple task, but it's also not difficult. It's just a lot of uh, small things to do, and you have to double check every time so you you you're sure it's working let me show you where i am right now all the transformers the output transformer and the main ac is connected to everything uh and now i just need to connect the board put it inside and then connect all these cables to the correct places let's do it Before I assemble the, the board here into the amp, I will double check to see if I got all the wiring right. Otherwise, it will be a super pain in the ass to undo this. So let's check it. Double check it. I just figured out the cables were too long, so I'll have to cut them and they were already soldered. Whew. Five hours in this, but it is what it is. Let's do it. That's it for today. Managed to put the board inside and to trim all the other wires tomorrow is another day day three of the assembly thing of the amp i'm now just having to connect all the yellow cables and some uh parts into the pots and i'm almost done i hope i end this today I'm actually finding this really confusing so in order to keep track I will be green green drawing the ones I already installed this way I know this is done All cabling is done. Let's move on to the speaker cable and put the speaker in the cabinet and test it. understand this is a super critical part of the process I have to insert the chassis here and then mark really tight okay this is probably right <laughs> I'll try to 
turn it. This is heavy as hell. So I have to check. Now I'll have to drill here and here. And it allows me some adjustment because it's not a perfect square. So let's do it. I forgot my Bosch drill machine, so I'll have to do with this IKEA. Let's hope it does it. Start slowly. Ah, great. Very easy. I'll put some <clears throat> painter's tape on the other side so it doesn't get screwed. Metallics that doesn't get screwed. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Now, for the moment of truth, let's figure out. Let's figure out if it fits. Yes, it does. Just have to plug the speaker in. And I left it sideways so I can use this speaker with other amps so I have a little more space. This is the main speaker. Let me just tighten this jack a little. Okay. Cool. Done. I'll have to drill a hole around here. Get the power cable. <clears throat> Do that later. So now I'm drilling a hole to connect this and have it probably like this. Put this screw. So I just turn the amp on and it works, powering the tubes and praying it works at first. Let's go. I have already set the rectifier tube and the two 6v6s. Now I'm off for the 12AX7 and 12AY7. So, this is the 12AI Y7, so it's this one, V1. Man, I can't wait to play this. I just hope it works. So, the, again, checking 12AX7A, second. And the tubes have uh, the pins here, as you can see. Let me just open up a little. So the tubes have this missing uh, pin here and you have to make sure you get the tube in the right position for the socket. That's just it. <clears throat> okay, it's in place. And now the 12.8Y7, three days working on this amp. If it works, bad. I'll be very happy. Okay, moment of truth. Are you ready? And just by safety reasons, I will do it with something. Yeah, I will do it like this hooray it's on <laughs> and nothing seems to be smoking let's turn the volume up but no sound
tubes are working. Unfortunately, there's no sound. But this tube here, the rectifier tube, doesn't seem to be working. Might be something related to that I have to figure out. Okay, fourth day working on the amp. And after talking with my good friend Miguel Oliveira from MVO Custom Effects, he spotted um, some errors that might be causing the problem. So here they are. Let me show you this component here, which I think it's a condenser. It's upside down, so I need to flip it this way. And then there's a lot of soldering like this one here that it's not soldered and he advised me to solder it. So let's do it and figure out if it works. Let's check it. It works. <laughs> so it all works. I'll play it just through the amp and then I'm using my studio pedal board that I haven't used for a while, uh, but I'm really happy to have it here. I'm using my studio pedal board to let you hear how it reacts to pedals. Let's go. Bright channel. Plugging in to the input one on the bright channel. Tone at 10, volume at 3. I got this settings from G.E. Smith and he also uses Tweed Deluxe amps, so let's go. My few tone guitar bridge pickup. And I have this problem. It's incredibly loud and it doesn't play clean. But I've heard a lot of people playing clean. Uh, it cleans really well with the volume, with the guitar volume. Let me turn on delay. A little more volume. doesn't play clean. It's happening. It's happening. I'll probably better search it a little on the fabulous internet. Okay, there's a trick to this amp. There's a really cool trick. It turns out both volumes are interactable. Depending on where you set the normal channel volume, it will attenuate the bright channel. Let's hear it. <laughs> I can play jazzy, clean sounds with this, and I also can play funky stuff with it. So this is the great 
Tweed 57 trick, but it still compresses in a beautiful manner. It still seems like it's going into feedback, no matter where you set it. Let's hear the other channel, the normal channel. And the tone control also has a huge impact on your headroom. So the less, the least amount of tone you enable, the more it cleans. It's a little too woofy. If you open up the tone, it starts to break up a little more. It is a beast of an amp. It's super loud. It's still super loud. You can clean it up with volume on the guitar. Let me use the Deep Six compressor going into it for a little more volume and a little more compression. Really, really cool. But the way I like it the most is with the interactive channels, because you can get way better sound. It's a killer amp and it takes pedals really well. Let's hear it with some fuzz pedals like Compagon Bender by Russ Effects. Or the Jupiter Effect Silver Machine Octafuzz. Little delay by the Delay Lama. Or some overdrive by the J Rocket Melody. more drive by the GT500 full tone. phaser and the j-rocket let me turn on the reverb or that albert king tone out of phase man i was really missing playing with this beautiful pedal board, just incredible. 
and this is it. A great, great, great amp. I built it myself, so it's really rewarding to, to have done this. Tone is incredible uh, of the amp. It records super well. It's, it's a tone machine. It's an inspiring, mach inspiring machine. It's in the, that spot, but it's loud, so it's, to me, it's, it would never be an amp for home use. It's a loud amp. It can compete easily with a drummer, even with this trick that we're doing here. If you turn it off a little more, so let me check, no pedals on. If we turn it quieter on the, on the bright volume, it gets strange. So let's take off all the normal volume. as quiet as it plays full frequency because if you turn it less than than this 1.8 1, 1 almost uh, 2 1.8 it loses frequencies it loses bass it gets really thin here it's it, it almost clicks We can attenuate the tone. I love it. I love it. It's a magical small amp that I really adore. But I'm very curious to hear what are your thoughts. And I'll probably be doing uh, an episode on a speaker, different speakers for this amp, because that's a very famous mod. So stay tuned. But let me know what you think about the amp. You know, if you want to support the show, you can contribute to the tip chart on PayPal or become a patron where you'll get early access to episodes, free video lesson every week, a free backing track every month, and of course my huge thank you. If you're interested in guitar lessons with me, just send me an email or a direct message via Instagram or Facebook and we'll deal with it from there. Thanks a lot, we'll see each other next week. Bye-bye.